Salutations! A week ago, the Chinese military held a big parade, showing off quite a few of new weapon systems, including some previously unannounced ones. Since the original ceremony lasted for hours, Binkov brings you here an edited down video with just the interesting stuff showing the weapons. And of course, Binkov shares his own commentary and insight, giving more context to those new systems. Let's hit it off. What were the systems shown that Binkov thought were the biggest surprises and most game-changing weapons for the Chinese? The biggest one was probably the DF-17. It was the first time the weapon was publicly shown. While the missiles in the trucks may be mock-ups, the statement Chinese military is trying to make still stands. DF-17 is, as per official announcement, a missile for medium and close-range targets. Medium range for ballistic missiles is defined as between 1000 and 3000 kilometers. The booster section seems to be quite similar to another Chinese missile, DF-16, which is a short-range missile. But the DF-17 has greater range, as its warhead is a hypersonic glider. The parade marks the first time any country showed a weapon with such a warhead. And unless other countries are hiding deployment of similar weapons, this is also the second claim of such warhead. First was the Russian claim in 2018 that their avant-garde warhead was operational. So why is this warhead a big deal? Ballistic missiles fly in an arc. Such arc is, once the missile is detected and tracking of it starts, quite predictable. Some ballistic warheads may have maneuvering options, but those are mostly for precision, not evasion. Even if evasion maneuvers are designed into the warhead, possibly such as with the Russian Iskander, the maneuvers are fairly mild, basically just offering an expanded cone of possible final impact trajectories. Enter the hypersonic glider warheads. While their speed is slightly slower, they still offer much better evasion capabilities, making interception extremely hard. The reason for that is that their trajectory is even lower than the depressed flight trajectory of ballistic missile warheads. So they won't cross the horizon and show on enemy radars as early as other ballistic warheads. That means possibly shorter reaction time for the interceptor systems. Even more importantly, such warheads have body designs that produce lift, so they essentially glide through the thin air in their suborbital shots, which also means they can be steered as they glide. Unlike regular warheads, which could be steered within a fairly small cone, glider warheads can change their course laterally by a huge degree, even making 90 degree turns over large areas, in theory. Possibility for evasive maneuvers are much greater, and thus interception is much harder. As an added benefit, gliding instead of just falling at ballistic trajectory adds range, so a smaller rocket can deliver the same explosive punch to the same distance or the same rocket can deliver it to greater distances. US is known to be developing similar warheads, but so far none have been announced as ready for use. But let's go on. Another big reveal was the unmanned combat aircraft seen on a truck. While the lack of details on the aircraft point towards a mock-up and not an operational plane, the message is still there. China intends to put such aircraft into service. The dimensions and general layout are similar to the Sharp Shore Demonstrator, which first flew in 2013. The design has evidently been refined, and it's likely this configuration is going to be the operational one. One big change has been the rear end of the plane, with a hidden exhaust for added radar and infrared stealth. The official announcement declared the drone to be for attack missions. Its aero wing layout does corroborate that, suggesting high subsonic speed, basically trading range and loiter time for speed, compared to recon drones. Still, the flying wing configuration is quite efficient and comparing the plane with the US drone demonstrators, its likely combat radius is at least a thousand miles. That being said, the aircraft is not as large as US X-47B demonstrator, nor the Russian Hunter drone. Possible reason may be intended use on aircraft carrier, where deck space isn't unlimited. Two years ago, Chinese Aviation Industry Corporation made a small model kit of the very same design we saw on the parade, for internal circulation. The model had two weapon bays, each roughly 4 meters by half meters, suggesting 1000 pound bombs may be the limit when it comes to internal carriage capacity. The small model also featured a faceted electro-optical pod under the nose, like F-35 has, which was missing on the big parade mock-up. When could the new UCAV go into service is unknown, but seeing how several carrier mock-ups did feature similar class drones, it's likely the 003 carrier, now being built, may be the first one to carry it. For all the demonstrators US and Europe have flown so far, there wasn't any political will to go further with those programs. 
there is currently just one jet engine powered drone intended for non-recon active service, the US MQ-25, which is to be primarily a tanker with some recon capabilities. Russian Okhotnik or Hunter may still be in demonstrator phase, so actual in-service date of any similar class stealthy UCAV in the world may very well be past 2025 unless US does crash course development of an already established design based on existing demonstrators. Another big reveal of the parade was the big black recon drone. Apparently it is designated WZ-8. Unlike the UCAV mock-up, many details are visible on the aircraft, suggesting a real operational plane. What is also apparent is that it has no air intakes, and the engine nozzles at the back also suggest a rocket engine, so it's a very high-speed recon drone somewhat akin to US D-21 drone from the 1960s. Biggest similarity is means of deployment. WZ-8 has visible lugs on its back, suggesting it is to be dropped in air from a H-6 bomber. But unlike D-21, which would simply fly over enemy territory, then drop the film before self-destructing, this Chinese drone features landing gear, which means it is to return home after the mission, for reuse. Actual recon equipment is also of course going to be much more modern, but there are other differences as well. D-21 used the ramjet engine. The Chinese drone uses rocket engines. It is also somewhat smaller at 10 meters in length and having a 3 to 4 meter wingspan. Rocket propulsion may grant it much higher speed and thus even higher flight ceiling, but it is evident there are large control surfaces present and there aren't any visible gas thrusters or thrust vectoring on the plane suggesting operational altitude of the plane is certainly closer to 30 km than, say, 60 km. At 60 km, the air is too thin for aerodynamic control of similar aircraft. The likely means of employment is thus H-6 bomber taking the drone out to the sea, possibly a few hundred kilometers off the Chinese coast. Then the drone is launched and makes its run over the area of interest. Its biggest advantage should be the surprise factor. Unlike satellites, which can be tracked so the enemy can try to hide from them, such supersonic recon craft can appear with very little warning. At 40 km altitude, ground radars could try and detect an object 800 km away. At Mach 4, such a distance may be covered within 12 minutes. Also, current SAM systems are optimized against objects flying at altitudes up to 30 km. Even if 30 km is the cruising altitude, actual horizontal reach of a SAM system at said altitude is going to be smaller than usually stated range figures, which are given against regular planes. Since such a fast recon drone will not be very maneuverable, the best way to bring it down may be anti-ballistic missile defenses. Perhaps China believes the fairly small number of ABM systems deployed makes its drone safer. The drone might also not be flying overhead the target, as today's sensors are capable of attaining high-resolution images from over 100 kilometers away. Of course, side-looking cameras are needed for that capability, something that's not been evident on the drone from the available images. Biggest mystery may be why have the Chinese opted for rocket propulsion, which doesn't offer long range. Scramjet propulsion may be better there, but the Chinese may not be capable of fielding such engines yet. What they do seem to need is coverage of the area near their coast, up to 1000 kilometers or so, and coverage in case their satellites are disabled, which is what this kind of recon drone offers. Such machines are quite complex and it's not likely China will be fielding dozens of such drones anytime soon. Most likely we're looking at a strategic recon asset. Yet another potentially interesting system is DF-100. It is the first time China officially presented the system. DF series makes it clear it's part of the Chinese rocket force, so it's not a short-range army system. The official announcement, however, named it CJ-100. CJ designation is reserved for cruise missiles. And the most interesting bit is that the announcement said it was a hypersonic, long-range weapon. Now, hypersonic speed is defined as being Mach 5 or higher. If DF-100 is indeed hypersonic, it would make it something similar to Russian Sircon. The Russian missile is anti-ship one, which is a tougher mission set than for a high-flying cruise missile. But Circon uses a scramjet engine, and no data or imagery from China has so far suggested such engines are ready for active combat use in China. The launcher vehicle is however very similar to one seen here. This image shows a mysterious missile being fired. A large missile, to be sure, at least 8 meters long, with a visible booster to get it to high speeds. At that point, either ramjet or scramjet engine takes over. 
While the image is blurry, the missile does not seem to have features of using scramjet propulsion, which would be a very thin chiseled nose and intake and nozzle being integrated into the body of the missile itself. So while this is a very big assumption on his part, Binka will estimate that the missile is likely barely hypersonic or near hypersonic and that it uses ramjet engines. Air breathing engine can easily be throttled so the missile may feature a range of speeds, perhaps Mach 3 for cruise segment and over Mach 4 perhaps close to Mach 5 for short periods to evade defenses if needed. Most of this is conjecture of course, there's simply not enough data out there. But given the development of Russian counterparts and the sheer amount of money being pumped into new weapons in China, such capabilities would not be impossible. How useful could such a cruise missile be? Certainly flying fast also means it must fly high, so it could be detected by the radars much farther away. But as with the recon drone, if the missile is flying so high that most of the air defenses are not capable of intercepting it, the trajectory may be worth it. Again, anti-ballistic missile defenses may be able to bring it down, but a non-ballistic path means it would still be harder to hit. And it may be a cheaper option to saturate the ABM defenses than with ballistic missiles. Still, it remains to be seen just what this DF-100 is and what is its true intended role. The last new system that was shown is the underwater unmanned drone, basically a mini submarine. It's comparable in size to some of the US drone sub-demonstrators in development. Whether this Chinese sub is actually in service as claimed is not known, but it is evident some corners have been cut. It uses twin screws without skewback feature. Without those, it should produce more noise than solutions on US demo subs at same speeds. Which leads to the following conjecture. Chinese will not be using the mini subs at high speeds. While such speeds are useful to the US due to possibly great distances to be covered, the Chinese may be content with deploying their drone subs much closer for defense. The mission profile of such class of subs is not offensive anyway. They are projected to either stay put and listen or to deploy hydrophones or perhaps mines. None of those missions require great speed. On to the missiles again. YJ-18 missile mock-ups were shown. While the said missile has been a part of the Chinese Navy arsenal for a few years now, images were not very clear. The mock-ups on trucks, however, show it is more or less identical to the Russian anti-ship missile variant of the Caliber family. The mock-up shown does differ from the Russian missile in size. While the Russian missile without booster is 8 meters long, the Chinese mock-up is up to 6 meters long. It could be, of course, the mock-up was made smaller on purpose. If that is the case, while the Chinese variant may have different specs, overall the differences probably aren't that great. Perhaps a bit more range, newer seeker, etc. If the missile is indeed of this size, then the range, speed or warhead values may be inferior to the Russian variant. What is perhaps the biggest revelation is one of nomenclature. While previously it was believed that one of the known YJ-18 variants is similar to Russian missile family, a completely different missile with conventional cruise missile layout, the parade announcement made it clear that the two variants shown were all anti-ship missiles. One for ships, fired from vertical launchers and one for submarines, fired from torpedo tubes. It also suggests that the Chinese Navy may not be operating a conventional cruise missile yet. However, CJ-100 missile has been rumored to be a part of the O-52 and O-55 ship class inventory. So, who knows? Going a little bit into the skies. A new variant of H-6 bomber was shown. H-6N, evidently based on the H-6K redesign of some years ago. But there are two big changes. One is the refueling boom on the nose, making this the longest range Chinese aircraft to date. Basic to Pol of 16 that the original H6 was based on had decent range. H6K added newer turbofan engines, which according to the Russian manufacturer use roughly 30% less fuel. And the airframe itself may have been modified in some small ways, perhaps made a bit lighter for same performance or heavier for added performance and result is still likely greater reach of H6K. H6N now gets the option of being refueled in air, once en route to target if needed and again en route to base. In theory its range could be tripled. In practice though it's not likely such range would ever equate to actual straightforward reach. At least not against the US, as their defenses close to China would likely not allow for any H6 planes to fight through into the open Pacific. 
It's more likely refueling would be either used for added endurance on patrol, for anti-shipping missions, or for using various go-around paths to get to the target, thus forcing the enemy to monitor a much greater area. The second big change is the removal of the bomb bay. Instead, this image shows an interface to attach various loads underneath the belly. This likely includes the aforementioned new recon drone, but also air-launched ballistic missiles that US Congress report on China mentioned, which haven't been identified yet, as well as rocket carrier missions for putting small objects into the orbit. There were other systems shown at the parade, but Binkov won't go into details on all of them. Some were known to be used for some time now, but have only now been shown officially in a parade, like the DF-41 ICBM. While in service since 2017, but this time it's likely the system gained full operational capability. 16 launchers were shown. Since multiple nuclear warheads are carried, just two brigades of DF-41 could add more warheads for Chinese than all the other previous generation of DF-31 missiles. Z-20 helicopters were also shown publicly for the first time, though various images have leaked before over the last few years. Z-20 is a medium-class utility helicopter, obviously based on the Sikorsky S-70 layout since China had two dozen of those helicopters since 1980s. Various small differences are evident, but not significant, save for a five-bladed rotor, suggesting different weights and materials used in the transmission and rotor itself. China did not have a helicopter of such medium class until Z-20. If anything like newer models of Black Hawk, Z-20 may be able to lift similar loads as larger M-17 and Z-8 helicopters, while being more compact and possibly cheaper to operate. A new model of multiple rocket launcher was also shown, likely a domestic variant of A3 system offered for export, as they share almost identical features. It may also be another member of the PHL-03 family, which was the Chinese version of the Russian Smirch MRL. Anyway, capabilities are very likely shared with the mentioned A3 system, for which specifications have been published. 370mm rockets are new for the Chinese army, and as with A3, may come in two warhead types, with ranges up to 280 km. So the importance of this new system is that it can provide precise long-range fire for the Chinese army. While previously only the rocket force's ballistic missile systems could cover entire Taiwan, now the number of missiles threatening Taiwan may get much greater, quickly. To wrap it up, several more quick mentions. DF-26 missiles were shown with the official announcement mentioning three different roles – nuclear, conventional and bunker busting, pointing to likely three different warhead variants, perhaps four if the anti-shipping variant from the previous parade is separate from the conventional one. A new rifle was also shown. It seems to be the new common rifle, one to replace the old bulb-up design. The new design is surprisingly conventional and overall firing mechanism seems closer to one seen on HK416, using short-stroke piston. HQ-17A was also shown, a new variant of the Chinese take on the Russian TOR missile system. While it evidently still carries 8 missiles, there are bound to be some improvements in electronics, to earn the A suffix as the radar arrays are different, and of course the whole system is now on a wheeled vehicle, instead of a tracked one for the regular HQ-17. Last but not least, Binko will mention the new Type 15 light tank. While again in service for a year or two, this was perhaps the clearest opportunity to show it off. It is designed to be used on terrain and in infrastructure not suitable to heavier tanks, and can be more easily airlifted at its alleged weight of 30-something tons. Its smaller gun and likely lighter armor protection are compromises that the Chinese deemed acceptable for this niche role tank. In theory, Y-20 transport plane may be able to carry two of them with its 66-ton payload limit. And that's that. Hope you enjoyed this coverage of the recent Chinese parade. Perhaps certain stuff was put in a better, more detailed context than the usual mainstream media manages. Bink of Stake would be a parade showing further Chinese progress, though at times perhaps jumping the gun, with showing mock-ups instead of ready systems. So a mix of propaganda and real progress. While the US is still far ahead in overall capability of its forces, the gap does seem to be growing ever smaller. Oh, and before you go, think about subscribing, if you like my content. If you want to be notified of my upcoming videos, subscribing is not enough. You also have to click that bell-shaped notification icon. And if you're viewing Binkov on a phone, notifications from YouTube also need to be turned on. Well, that's it for now. Salutations!
And remember, Binkov may talk about hypothetical wars, but only real peace can bring us all together.